Welcome to Season 2 of One Word with me, Thomas Leamy, a podcast where guests join me to discuss one word, topic or concept from an entirely fresh perspective. As a business psychology practitioner, I help busy professionals transform their relationship with stress, resulting in higher performance, better results and clearer minds. Visit my new website, leamy.co, where you can book a workshop or simply use the code one word for 15% off digital products. Thank you for joining me. Let's begin. Jasmine Debian has been an entrepreneur from a very young age, never shying away from the new and the unknown. She studied business administration and worked as a customer relations management consultant in various business sectors, helping to maximize efficiency and optimize profits. As a three principles practitioner, certified transformative coach and host of the podcast, dream it, dare it, do it, live the life you want. Jasmine gets to combine her expertise, knowledge, and heart-centered approach to help people find their way, find their voice, and thrive. Her mission is to help people get koji with it, i.e. get clear, organized, going, and inspired. Jasmine Debian? You are so very welcome to the One Word Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm very well. How are you, Thomas? I am really happy and excited to be talking to you. As you know, a few weeks ago when I was in Greece, I was listening to you talking to Rob Cook on his podcast. We're listening. And I thought, I need to get Jasmine on One Word. I thought that was a brilliant conversation, by the way. So here we are. And our One Word is inspiration. I'd like to ask you to kick off, Jasmine. Why why is that word important to you? Mm, So many reasons. It's been there for so long in my life. I think that it it originally it, it originally started with I wanted to be an inspiration to people um I remember I remember you know I've been doing lots of personal development and um I remember a time where there was this that I was doing this exercise which was write your your personal eulogy like let's pretend you know and I wrote the my my own eulogy I don't remember what it was but I what I remember is like kind of like having on my tombstone can't believe she did it you know like that kind of thing and so that was a little bit um what was present for me at the time like like be the inspiration that you want to see in the world kind of thing you know and it has evolved i i you know i went from i guess i went from an egoic, an egoic personality to a heart-centered personality. Um, and I still, you know, I still get in my head because, you know, I'm human. But <laughs> um, now it's really come to, I'm really looking at the root of inspiration. And the root of inspiration is like inspire. So breathe in. And when you breathe in, well, there's life, right? And so that's that's what I love about inspiration. It, it's it's just it's just life. It breathes. You're breathing life in when you're inspired. Yeah, that's a really nice description. You could probably see me breathing in as you were saying that. Yeah, you said 
your understanding of inspiration has evolved from a kind of what you termed a more egoic view to a more heart-centric view. Can you say a bit more about that evolution? Well, this is not something I like to say, but I just used to, you know, want to inspire people because I want to impress people. And, you know, it that that was my ego. It was like, and it wasn't, it wasn't like, okay, now I'm going to go out and I'm going to impress people. <laughs> you know, it wasn't that thing, but there was something inside of me that just wanted to be loved, you know, and I thought that the love came out came from came from out there not from in here and so I built you know I would build strategies this is so funny because this is what I do in in my business now um but I would build strategies to be liked and be loved and like what would I say what like okay let me so it was kind of like okay I want to be the inspiration that you want to see in the world but it was kind of, it was like a come from and then once I'm there, then I will feel like this. You know, it was kind of like, that's what I mean by egoic. It was like, it was made up. Like, that. Like this is a new definition that I've gotten of ego very lately. Like, I'm no joke in the past few months. Like, ego is everything I made up about myself with the power of thought, you know? So I made up, I'm going to be good. I made up, I'm going to be nice. I made up, I'm going to be respectful. I made up all of these things that, and I was not doing it from a come from of my heart of like, I really want this, although I was, but it was on top of, you know, like, like my foundation was I'm going to in impress people. And I was placing all of this on top of it. And once I got connected to my heart, I started to see a lot. Oh man, I just did that because my ego wants it, not because I want it. And it's, I'm starting to remove the ego in my day-to-day -day life, which, and it shows up, you know, but I'm, I'm spending more time in my heart than in my ego, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Where does inspiration come from? Mm. It's there. Inspiration is there. You're breathing. It's like air. Breathe in, breathe out. That it's just there. Where does it come from? I don't know. It's there. Right? I mean, where does it come from? I, I'm not a scientist, but something about, you know, the planet has it. I, don't, I have no idea. But that's how it feels for me, inspiration. Like it's there, but sometimes we have thinking that gets in the way. Let me, let me try to explain this. So, so before we got on camera, I was explaining to you that I love to work with solopreneurs. And one of the things that I do is I get clear with people, right? So getting clear is like, okay, so people want to know, I want to do this, right? And then they tell me what they want to do. And then they explain to me why they're not doing it. And while they're explaining me why they're not doing it, well, there's no inspiration there. Like there's no breath. They're actually suffocating the inspiration. They're like putting all of the thinking on top of the breath, right? So what I do is I, I get clear, I hear what they want to say, and then I go get organized and then I get them going. And it kind of gets them in a movement. It gets them into this energy of movement. And as they start moving, they're no longer stuck. And then inspiration comes. It just comes naturally. It's an, like, I've seen it time and time and time again. When we get organized and we get going and we start getting moving, inspiration comes. Because you're kind of, I don't know, there's a movement and you're breathing. I don't know, I don't know how it happens, but that's what my experience is. So you could say it's a infinite resource. Yes. Never runs definitely. out. Okay, Never cool. runs out. So Jasmine, what do you think is the most common misconception about inspiration? Hmm. I think the most common misconception is that 
people think they should be something different than who they are in order to have it. Yeah, I think that it's always there. It's always available for anybody. But then they think it's not possible. They think they can't have it. They think they need to be in a different place in the world to have it. But it's always there. Yeah, and I think the words get inspired go together a lot. Like get inspired, get it from somewhere. Do your workout and then you will feel inspired or, you know, have that business meeting and you will feel on top of the world or whatever. But with your angle on inspiration that it's always there, how do you help people see and realize that it's always there? I get them going. Because it happens on its own. It literally happens on its own. It's kind of like, I love that that people have the courage to reach out and say, okay, I want to do this, but it's never going to happen. You know, and I'm like, no, actually it is. You know, because I see it, right? Whether it's an email, whether it's a mailing list, whether it's social media, whether it's website, whether it's helping people, whether it's, a new clients, a webinar, whatever it is. Like once you just do it, like I think I've, I've got the Nike thing going. It's like, just do it. it it's it's going to come. Like we, we think, we think that we, ha- I, I, I'm re- I feel like I'm repeating myself, but we think we have to be something else than who we are today in, in order to get started. No, just get started and whoever you need to be will show up. Like, you know, you're going to create a website and then you're going to be like, I don't know how to do this. And then you're going to be like, okay, let me hire somebody, you know, like whoever you need to be is going to show up in that moment, but don't decide in advance. Like if your heart is telling you, I want to do this, go do it. And then see what happens. And maybe what you thought was different, but what you thought is not going to be what is going to happen is what I mean. But it's going to change your energy. It's going to change your vibe. It's going to make you evolve. It's going to make you live. It's it's going to make you move forward. And Jasmine, I mean... You said something there that made me think of the title of your podcast, which is Dream It, Dare It, Do It. Yeah. Live the life you want. Yeah. Which is remarkably fitting for uh, your tagline, which is the Inspires. Is that right? In- the Inspires. Inspires. Okay, great. So, congratulations, by the way, because I know you are on four seasons and it's a great show. Thanks. Tell me a bit about the. Uh, inspiration behind that that's also that's also evolved you know like when I first started the podcast it was like okay I'm gonna monetize it you know where am I gonna put the ads and who are gonna be my sponsors and I'm, I was like you know I was like a do 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 and that was my head you know like that was okay I'm gonna have a podcast I'm gonna make money I'm gonna be somebody right and that fell away Like, honestly, that totally fell away. And I was looking for great, fantastic names and, and I was writing them out, you know, like I have these pads and then I have ideas and I just write and I had tons and tons of ideas. And I literally just woke up one morning and it was like, dream it, dare it, do it. So it was first dream it, dare it, do it. Now that's the name of my company. When I first started my business, it was D3, D to the power of three. And it was dream it, dare it, do it. And, and as I evolved in, in doing the podcast, I added live the life you want, because I'm really seeing when I talk to people that they live the life that they think that they want. They live the life that they think they should live. They live the life that their parents, family, friends, society, any, you know, like 
just put any qualification in there, but they don't live the life that they truly want. What is it that you want? I mean, I wanted to be solopreneur and I wanted to work from home and I wanted to, you know, do the things that I love doing that I'm having fun with, you know, and I grew up being told you can't have fun. You, you, you can't be playing. And I was like, oh no, man, I can't be playing. So I was going around in life. Oh man, I can't have fun in my work, you know, but I don't have, I'm not married. I don't have any kids. My life is my work. I have a lot of fun. And I want people to look at what is it that they truly want? Do you want to be super busy and not see anything in your life? Or do you want to just be super busy and have fun and be super excited? Like, what what is it that you want? So it, it that's how it, it evolves. And that's what I wish for everybody. Because every single person has... Once they do what they truly want and they're living from the heart, they're living from love. And if they're living from love, they're giving love to the world. And I want to be in a world of love. There's a quote that goes something like, aging is inevitable, but growing up is optional. Yeah. <laughs> so we all I'm a big believer in in play at all ages as well and you know having fun and even my friend Martin Dara came on this podcast to talk about play but Jasmine so you know tell us a bit about the work you do with clients is that evolving or like what's what's the core of your work how are you helping your clients find that inspiration at the end of your cog formula cogi is <laughs> yeah, it yeah <laughs> we got we gotta we gotta get koji we get koji <laughs> with it um listen what happens is like it's kind of it just kind of get gets clear inside a conversation there's another thing that i say is that everything happens in a conversation in a conversation is two people at the very least, right? But we often have a monologue with ourselves. Now, I've learned that monologues are really for stand-up comics, not for solopreneurs. You should be in a conversation, you know? And so once I start talking with clients, kind of like, okay, well, what what do you want to do? So they come to me, okay, I want a website. You know, okay, well, why do you want a website? And then we start looking at all the possibilities because they think that they want a website because they need a website. And then I tell them, you need nothing. You don't need anything. And then they're like, uh, what do you mean? Of course I need something. It's like, no, you don't. You don't need anything. I know many solopreneurs that don't do any advertising, that don't have a website, that don't have social media, they don't even have a desk, you know, it's kind of like, you don't need it. It's kind of like, let's see what you want, and the reason why you want it. And then come from that want. And then things are going to evolve. Right? So it's all in a conversation. Am I making myself clear? Like, it, it, is that the question? Absolutely. You can take yeah. it any way you want. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That I love, I, what I love is that once people get out of their own way with the busy thinking of, I need social media, I need a website, I need to get followers, I need to blah, 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 blah. Like they're all, the need is kind of like invading the inspiration and what they truly want to do doesn't show up, right? When we get that out of the way, what they truly want to do shows up. And if they're, usually when we come from something that we truly love, when we come from the heart, people come to us. And and I'm not saying this, just out of my hat because I don't have a website right now. If you type coach Jasmine, I'm just saying people, if you type coach Jasmine.com, you're going to get a uh, in construction. 
page just because well, I'm too busy to do my website right now and I'm focusing on my clients. But my my roster is very busy. And I'm not doing any ads and I'm not doing any of that. And I'm not saying don't do ads. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is let's get clear. And then it evolves. You know, um, I'm trying to give you an example. Hmm. Well, while you're thinking when it comes to mind for me, I mean, People like Kathy Casey, who I'm sure you know. Yeah. No website. Yeah. No social media. Mavis. Always busy. Yeah. Incredible at training and coaching. Yeah. Mavis Kern. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. That's so, uh that points to what you're saying, you know, because you can really feel their heart is in their work. And that yes. is magnetic. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, I, I, that's it. That's, and, and so, and, and it's not to say that they would be even more busy if they had a website. We don't know that. Like all of that is speculation, but it's not a requirement. It's not a, a, a necessity. So look for yourself first and, and then see, you know, look within again, stop looking out there, you know, out there, they're telling you, go get followers. Honestly, guys, who cares? I thought you were <laughs> going to say, follow me. <laughs> <laughs> you could follow me. Uh, but what I, where my mind goes is this. I have a girlfriend who has 100,000 followers. She's not getting any money out of that. Like, is that, like, what is the purpose of having 100,000 followers? If... Nothing comes of it. You're absolutely right, Jasmine. And even in my own life, on Instagram, which, you know, frustrates me a lot, I used to have nearly a thousand followers, which, you know, isn't that much. I deleted them all. I went down to zero and started again. And now I just have 200 and something with way more engagement, like yeah. much more answers to polls and things but they're the right kind of people following me yeah. rather than Listen, when you know. I started in social media, you know, I was doing what everybody does. And the, like, I, I went online, how do you get followers? Cause I wanted followers. I'm thinking I'm going to get followers and then I'm going to make money basically. Right. So my goal was to make money. So I'm, I'm like, okay, they say social media is it. So I'd go online. How do you make followers? So now the strategy was, Follow me, I'll follow you. Follow me, I'll follow you. What kind of crap is that? You know? So now I'm getting followers and I'm not following them unless I know them. And and now I get unfollows because what they're looking for is really a follow. Well, no, I want you to like what you're looking at. I'm giving you my heart here. You know, listen to my heart. <laughs> listen to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> all right well jasmine i have been very inspired by this conversation it's been a pleasure having you on the one word podcast thank you so much thank and you for inviting me of course and we're going to leave it there for today so to you and boti and frankie all the best yeah. thanks <laughs> Thank you for joining me on the One Word Podcast, and I hope that you found today's conversation thought-provoking. Feel free to check out my new website, leamy.co, where the code one word gets you 15% off digital products site-wide. That's all, folks. See you next time.